Harry Potter book theory starts off in Philosopher's Stone with the first chapter entitled The Boy Who Lived, where we're introduced to a new character known as Harry James Potter, who knows very little about what's going on. I'm a what? And he's welcomed into the wizarding world. That's the story that we already know. But now we're going to look at Dumbledore's story, a tale that begins far before this chapter and really encompasses the side of the book series that you may not have known. And since we start the book series off in the chapter The Boy Who Lived, where better than to start Dumbledore's parallel story except in that very chapter? And we're going to explain how Dumbledore already knew what was going on and why exactly Harry ended up being sent to the Dursleys. So, let's dive into this episode of Constant Review. Albus Dumbledore has sacrificed a large portion of his life in the battle against the Dark Arts. The quest for power took a great toll from him at a young age, as we know his teenage fantasies with Gellert Grindelwald cost him his sister's life and severely dampened his relationship with his brother, who was his last remaining family member. So it's unsurprising when Tom Riddle came swaggering around as the next Dark Lord, Dumbledore did all he could to oppose him. Sure, it looked like Dumbledore was willing to give him far more leeway than he should have, allowing him to build up his Horcrux and follower count before Dumbledore finally intervened. But when Dumbledore finally came to the fight, he founded the Order of the Phoenix and led the resistance to Voldemort's bid for power. However, despite his best efforts, the Order was vastly outmanned and outgunned by the Death Eaters, and it seemed to be on the way to imminent defeat. That was until the year 1980, when Dumbledore interviewed Sybil Trelawney, and a new hope emerged. As we all know, Trelawney fell into a trance and delivered a prophecy about the downfall of Lord Voldemort at the hands of a boy to be born at the end of July. Thankfully, Dumbledore doesn't really believe in such foolish things as prophecies. Prophecies aren't always fulfilled, and when they are, the means of which is often so confusing and ironic. Just look at every single Greek tragedy. However, this was the seed he could use to start working on a plan to defeat Voldemort. Throughout the series, we see that Voldemort is very practiced in secrecy and discretion. In most cases, such as retrieving the prophecy from the Ministry of Magic or killing Dumbledore himself in the sixth book, we see that Voldemort is not willing to go into the field himself. If at any point in time he can delegate this task to one of his Death Eaters, one of his loyal followers, then he will. So, How do you kill a Dark Lord who doesn't expose himself? How do you defeat someone who will not enter the fray himself? Master, you are not strong enough. I am strength enough for this. Simple. You take advantage of his critical weakness. You take advantage of his greatest fear. And Voldemort's greatest fear is his own death. Voldemort is quick-tempered, rash, and headstrong. Characteristics Dumbledore could easily use to manipulate him into a trap. Dumbledore knew immediately that the fear of his own death would make him do anything to protect himself from this danger, including going after the Potters alone. After all, Voldemort isn't the kind of person who would tell his followers that he is in imminent danger due to a toddler. Therefore, Dumbledore, knowing this, would know that Voldemort would have to come out into the open and put himself in a vulnerable position. But how could Dumbledore use that to his advantage? How could he use that in a way to surely defeat Voldemort despite not knowing what day he was going to arrive and what kind of spells he would be using? Simple. The answer? Love. Dumbledore's favorite and Voldemort's least favorite piece of magic. When old Voldy strolls up on Godric's Hollow, he sees James playing with baby Harry, making bubbles with his wand for Harry's amusement. Voldemort enters the house, after which James realizes the attack and sends his wife and son upstairs. 
Voldemort then descends upon James and laughs to himself as James has come to confront him without a wand. But why would James do this? He isn't inexperienced in dueling. As far as we know from his adventures at Hogwarts, he was used to being jinxed all the time. And he was a member of the Order of the Phoenix and a known target of Voldemort. And finally, he had his wand in his hand literally moments earlier. Why didn't he have his wand in his hand when he went to face Voldemort? Of course, in Voldemort's mind, it was because James was silly and foolish, discarding his only weapon. But what if he was deliberately trying to sacrifice himself for his wife and child? From the earlier books, we all know the story about how Lily heroically sacrificed herself for Harry, granting him a protection which Voldemort couldn't break. And every time this protection is brought up, it is made abundantly clear that Lily did what she did, knowing that it would protect Harry, because that's what Dumbledore tells Harry. Dumbledore tells Harry. Dumbledore tells Harry. At the outset of the Harry Potter series, we don't know the details onto what happened between James, Lily, and Voldemort. And yet, Dumbledore knows exactly what happened. We find out, when we get to the seventh book, at the scene where Harry's parents were killed, no one witnessed the event. Even Harry himself had been within his crib at the time and had not directly seen his mother's murder. And so there were absolutely no witnesses to it happen. So how exactly did Dumbledore know that Lily died to save him? Let's first think about when Dumbledore knew that Lily died to save him. We've covered in my other video about Dumbledore being a pathological liar, that Dumbledore actually knew that Lily died to save him before he left Harry at the Dursleys. This is an absolute fact because Dumbledore himself writes in the letter that was left with Harry on the Dursley's doorstep that it was Lily's sacrifice that protected Harry and that's why he needed to stay with them. But when did Dumbledore find out that Lily had sacrificed herself for Harry? Was it that very day? Or was it perhaps earlier? And the answer is it had to be even earlier than that. Because McGonagall showed up on Privet Drive as early as in the morning before Vernon had even left for work. And she knew because Hagrid told McGonagall that Harry would be brought there. In fact, that means she had to have known as late as the evening beforehand, very soon after Harry's parents were killed. But how does Dumbledore know what happened in that room? Especially since no one was there to witness it, and Dumbledore didn't even go in person to pick up Harry from his parents' house. He delegated that task to Hagrid. And yet he is absolutely 100% sure, without a reasonable doubt, that Lily sacrificed herself for Harry, and that's why Harry needed to be put in the protection of his aunt, Petunia. So, all signs point to the fact that Dumbledore knew that this is what Lily would try to do if Voldemort was going to attack Harry. That if Voldemort was to encounter the Potters and somehow break through the Fidelius charm, that Lily would deliberately try to sacrifice herself for Harry. And if we needed any more proof in that, it's the fact that James attempted to do the exact same thing. Prior to Lily's sacrifice, he does the exact same thing she does and tries to throw himself in between Voldemort and his wife and child in order to save his loved ones. And so guys, that was Dumbledore's original plan to take down Lord Voldemort. To guarantee that if Voldemort 
encountered the Potters that he would meet his demise at the Potter's house. Of course, as we find out, there's a fatal flaw in his plan. When Voldemort's curse backfires upon himself, a part of Voldemort's soul breaks off and attaches himself to Harry. A fact that Dumbledore notices almost immediately and will force him to come up with a new plan in order to ensure that Voldemort is gone for good. And guys, there you have it. The boy who lived from the perspective of Albus Dumbledore. His first attempt at defeating Lord Voldemort that had not gone fully according to plan, forcing him to spend the next 10 years planning how he would successfully manage to take down Voldemort, and outlines the entire plot of the first Harry Potter book. So, if you guys want to see what he planned after that, and how his next attempt was to originally take down Voldemort, stay tuned for more of Dumbledore's Tale. I hope you guys liked this episode. If you guys are interested in seeing more, please remember to like and comment so that I get stop being lazy and get these episodes out faster. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you stay tuned for the next one. Bye.